the 12th grade, you can head on over. Actually, 9th through the 12th. I'm sorry, our 6th and 7th grades are probably gone. Over to the middle school ministry now. All of our high schoolers, if you're in high school, head over there with Pastor Dan. If you have a Bible with you, can you say amen? If you have a Bible with you, can you turn to the book of Revelations? Revelations. If you're having trouble finding it, just holler at me later. I'm not going to do that to you right now. Revelations chapter 12 is the last book of the Bible. A lot of times the book is misunderstood, but there's some victory even in Revelations. I'd like to read Revelations chapter 12 starting in verse 7 through 12, but I'm going to read the message version of the text just to kind of gleam it a little clearer for us. The Bible says this in Revelations 12, 7 through 12. It says, War broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought the dragon. The dragon and his angels fought back, but were no match for Michael. They were cleared out of heaven. Not a sign of them left. The great dragon, ancient serpent, the one called devil and Satan, the one who led the whole earth astray, thrown out, and all of his angels thrown out with him, thrown down to earth. Then I heard a strong voice out of heaven saying, salvation and power are established. Kingdom of our God, authority of his Messiah, the accuser of our brothers and sisters thrown out who accused them day and night before God. They defeated him through the blood of the Lamb. Somebody repeat that to me. Say, they defeated him through the blood of the Lamb and the bold witness of their, and the, and the, excuse me, and the bold word of their witness. They weren't in love with themselves. They were willing to die for Christ. So rejoice, O heavens, and all who live there, but doomed to earth and sea. For the devil's come down on you with both feet. He's had a great fall. He's wild and ranging with anger. He hasn't much time, and he knows it. May the Lord add a blessing to the reader and the hearer of his word. Today I just want to talk and preach and teach from the subject of, you've got the victory. You've got the victory. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. neighbor. Say, oh neighbor. oh, neighbor. You've got, You've got the, victory. the victory. The point of our talk today is that Satan fights against us every single day, but we have victory because of Jesus Christ. That's the word. That's the message. You know, we can't deny that evil exists every single day, and evil exists all around us. Can I get a witness to that? Evil exists. How do we know it exists? Just turn on your phone. Just turn on your computer. Just turn on your television and just walk outside. Or or somebody said, just hang out at my job. It's literally all around us. I first realized it existed back in the day when I visited Washington and Washington, D.C. and Virginia years ago. I visited slave quarters in Virginia, and then I went to the Holocaust Museum when I was in uh, Washington, D.C., but, but then I figured out it was not over. It was still around us. When I turned on the news just a year ago, I remember turning on the news where two African-American men were sitting at Starbucks minding their own business, and the police were called on them for no apparent reason. Or I could just look to Florida where innocent children were killed by basically another child who had an assault weapon. All these things helped me to realize that evil exists all around us. It's not just something that we see in fictional books or something that we just see on a TV show or something that we consider an illusion. And and though most most of it may be seen in the heart of people, this main source of all of this evil, the one who seeks to inspire it, his name is Satan. So as we communicate today, this book of Revelation shows us exactly who he is and how he seeks to harm us. 
See, in order for you to stand up against and to gain the victory over the enemy, one thing that you've got to do is you've got to know who the enemy is. You've got to know what his aim is in your life. You've got to know what he's trying to do and why he's trying to do it. You've got to identify what he's trying to accomplish. I don't want to see anybody in this place. I don't want to see one person that's in this building today face an attack that they can identify and can't stop. Because in all that you may go through, I want to say that there's some good news in the midst of it all. There's some good news. The good news is, is that the book of Revelations tells us the story of Satan's defeat. The story of Satan's defeat. Yes, the word of God teaches us that we ultimately, that we have an ultimately, an ultimate defeated foe up against us. And because of his defeat, we can stand against all the schemes and all the lies that he tries to conjure up in our lives. See, here's some background of the book of Revelations. We need to talk about it just for a moment. It's a prophetic book full of visions and a prophetic book full of symbolism. It's, it, truthfully, it's the kind of book that'll scare people. You know, you read the book of Revelations, a lot of times most people get a little bit, a little bit scared because, because they have a hard time understanding what's real and what's symbolic, what's symbolic and what's literal. They, they have a hard time differentiating what's going on there. But John is the writer of this book. And he makes it clear. He makes something clear that I want you to focus on today. Sometimes when things are a lot fuzzy, you got to get to the clarity. He makes some things clear. And here's the clarity. The clarity is that Christ wins the victory over Satan. That's what you got to remember. Christ wins the victory over Satan. And see, that's what I want you to focus on in your everyday life. That's what I want you to focus on right now, that ultimately, when you maintain your relationship with Jesus, you always win at the end of the day. You always win at the end of the day. Somebody needs to say, I win. I win. The outcome is set. It's just the journey that you must learn to travel in the right way. See, John wants us to know something in this text. John wants us to know that Satan is a defeated foe. I can't stress that enough. He is defeated. He's already defeated even when you feel like nobody's there for you. He's already defeated even when you feel like all oh, hope is gone. He's already defeated even when you feel like your finances aren't where they're supposed to be. He's already defeated even though the doctor gave you some bad news. He's already a defeated enemy. Now, what does that really mean, a defeated enemy? Let's get some clarity and some background on this. Again, as we read in the text, there was a war. There was a war. Say war. And Satan was characterized as a great dragon. He, 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 he was defeated in a war with Michael, the archangel. Satan and his demons were defeated. They lost the battles. The Bible says they were kicked out of heaven. He was cast down. He was kicked out. He was cast out. And now he's mad about it. Now he's upset about it. So, so what is he doing? What, so what is he doing because he's mad? So he's going about to deceive God's people. He wants to deceive the people of God. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 8 that he's a liar and there's no truth in him. So he's working to do these things in our lives that we should not believe, cannot believe, and we have to fight against every single day. That's why it's important that you're here on Sunday morning. That's why it's critical that you're involved in the things that we're trying to do for the kingdom. That's why we have to stick together in unity as a church family because the enemy wants to do three things in your life. And if you're a note taker, I want you to think about this. I want you to remember this. I want you to write this down. There's three things that the enemy wants to do in your life. Number one, he wants to confuse you. He wants to confuse you. Anybody ever saw somebody working around, walking around confused? He wants to confuse you. You can't move forward when you're confused. You can't step into what God wants to have for your life when you're confused. Number two, he wants to lie to you. The devil is a liar. He wants to lie to you. And number three, he wants to deceive you. He wants to make you think th certain things are, are, are a certain kind of way when they're really not. He wants to deceive you in order to reach his ultimate goal of ruining your spiritual life in order to stop the blessings that God has for you on the other side of your faith. If there's anything you can do right now is you can put your faith in God. 
See, Paul says this, because you have an enemy who does, who does these things, you have to be vigilant. He says you have to be vigilant. What is vigilance? It's being watchful of possible dangers or difficulties in your life. You got to watch what you allow people to say to you. You got to watch who you allow in your circle. Can I get a witness? You got to watch who you hang around. You got to watch who is trying to separate you from the relationship with Jesus that you need in order to guide you in the right direction. See, Paul said to the people in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, a good text. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 3, Paul said this. He said, I'm afraid just as a serpent tricked Eve with his cunningness that your hearts and minds will be tricked and you will stray from the single-minded love and pure devotion to God. See, the enemy wants the people of God to stray away from the principles that will make them successful in life. See, the enemy doesn't want you to be successful. The enemy don't want to see you praising and thanking God. The enemy wants to have you to have a frown on your face. The, the enemy wants you to, de to get deep down in anxiety and depression and, and suffering. But God said, that is not the life that I have planned for you. The enemy wants the people of God to stray away from the principles of God. While Paul is saying, you got to work every day to stay devoted. Paul said, don't be double-minded. You know, some folk have a reputation for being one thing one day and another thing a number, another. Paul said this. He said, see, see, a person who, who, who only knows Jesus when things are going bad, that's double-minded. That's not the goal. See, we've got to lift up Jesus even when things are going good. We got to lift up Jesus when the good times are happening and also when the bad times are happening. See, if, as Christians, we have to have what we call a single mind for Christ. We've got to be about his gen agenda. We've got to know who he is. We've got to know what he wants for our lives. We've got to lean on, on the history of what he has done for us. I don't know about you, but when times get rough, don't look forward. You just got to look back. Somebody needs to look back on what God did in your past. Think about the journey. Think about how the Lord has brought you through. And it will cause you to realize that if he did it back then, he can do it on today and he can do it in your future. Can somebody look back down memory lane and say, thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for me? If you brought me through that, I know you're going to bring me through this. Can I get a witness this morning that God can bring you through this? God can help you through all that you got through. And if you got through yesterday... He can help you get through today and carry you through your tomorrows. Again, what's our point for today? Satan fights against us, but we can stand firm in Christ. How does he fight against us? You know what? The Bible says that he works in deceitful ways. He wants us to see things from our own distorted human's perspective rather than from our hearts devoted to God. Prime example, in the Garden of Eden, we always talk about the story of the Garden of Eden between Adam and Eve. The, the, the enemy convinced Adam and Eve to question God. See, the devil deceives us by setting our minds on the things of man rather than the things of God. And see, we believe this stuff way too often. We believe the trick of the enemy. But if you know Jesus, you already got the victory. If you've got Jesus on your mind, if you know what he said, if you believe in his word, you are going to be okay. There's a song that says victory is mine. I need somebody in this place to say victory is mine. I need somebody in this place to claim that victory is mine. Victory today is mine. We've got the victory over the enemy. The Bible says this. The Bible says this, what the Bible says in Revelations 12, that we have victory over the enemy by the blood of the Lamb. Oh, I can stop right there. The blood, say the blood of the Lamb. When Jesus shed his blood on Calvary, when Jesus died on the cross, victory became mine. Victory. Somebody needs to proclaim, proclaim again that I have the victory. So, so the enemy is a guaranteed loser. 
So don't let what you face in life overwhelm you. That's, again, one of the deceitful tricks of the enemy because he wants your physical condition to overwhelm you. He wants your mental condition to overwhelm you. He wants your current condition to overwhelm you. He wants your stress and your anxiety to overwhelm you. He wants, he wants your todays to overwhelm you and not look toward the future that God has for your life. But the Bible teaches you that you are victorious and you are an overcomer. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but you can overcome. You are victorious by the blood of the Lamb. Jesus shed blood covers our sins so we don't have to live worried about what we did on yesterday. Somebody needs to know that you are forgiven. You need to stop worrying about your past because God already forgave you a long time ago. And if you can step into that forgiveness, you can step into the fact that God is going to do something great in your life. Because at the end of the day, you are an overcomer and you have the victory in Jesus. But secondly, you can also overcome the enemy by the word of your testimony. The word of your testimony. What is that? Let's go to Bible school for a minute. What is the word of your testimony? We can overcome Satan by simply working our best to live a lifestyle of faithfulness. You may fall down, but get back up. You may fall down, but get back up. Somebody say, get back up. And stand on the promises of God. You've got to persevere through the hard times. You've got to do as the Bible says. Cast your cares upon God when times get rough. You've got to stay in church when you feel like going astray. You've got to stay in the fold. You've got to give when you feel like keeping to yourself. You've got to love when nobody else loves you. You've got to know that God loves you. You've got to serve even when you don't feel like it. Even when your feet hurt. You got to serve. You got to live a lifestyle for the Lord. You win the battle of evil by simply doing God's will and simply working to do good things. Do good things. That's, that's what standing in victory is all about. That's how you beat Satan. That's how you beat the enemy. You do good even when the circumstances don't call for it. You have faith even when it doesn't make sense. You got to stand firm in Christ. Now, let me give you an example to help you understand this and kind of bring this home for you, this concept. There was this kid in my class by the name of Jacob. And so he was smaller than everybody else. Anybody ever had somebody in your class that was smaller than everybody else? Somebody said, that was me. <laughs> well, I'll never forget Jacob because he's now bigger than everybody else. But back then, young Jacob, he was the smallest kid in the class and everybody used to bully on Jacob. And after a while, he got smart. And he said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to find me somebody to protect me. And so he became one of my friends. And actually, he became one of my best friends. But, but his relationship with me was genuine, but it was also strategic. You see, I took young Jacob on like a little brother. I felt for him. I had a heart for this young brother because I saw that he was bullied. And so I took him on. He was, I was the big brother. He was the little brother. And see, he knew it was cool. He, he knew it was cool to hang out with me because I was a little bit bigger and I was stronger. I was a little wiser. I was older than him. He was a couple grades lower than me. And I, I played football and baseball and I was on the wrestling team. So wasn't nobody going to mess with me. So he made sure that he stayed close to me and close to my crew and close to my friends because as long as he was with me, they never messed with Jacob. He even started to milk it a bit. You know, we'd be hanging out and as long as he was with me and my crew, he'd be running his mouth. He'd be talking junk and he, he'd stick his tongue out at the other kids and he'd just hide behind us. He'd laugh at him, and he'd just have a good old time, and he was real comfortable. He could just let go and let loose and be himself. He was so comfortable because he stayed close to me and my friends because he knew that if anybody tried to mess with him, we would protect him. He knew that if anybody even tried to lay a finger on him, they'd be laying on the ground. And so when, everybody, when anybody ever came in his direction, i get right in front of him, and i say, what, what you going to do? I want to tell you today is uh, we need to take notes out of his playbook. If you're smart, all you got to do is stay close to the Lord. Yeah. 
Because when you stay close with him, the enemy ultimately can't get to you. When you stay close to him, the enemy ultimately can't hold you back. See, as long as you stay close to Jesus, ultimately that defeated enemy can't hurt you. See, I come here to tell you that the devil is a liar. And he's trying to deceive you. And the Bible says in Revelations 12, 10, that he has been silenced. Yet he still has effect in our lives. Yet we still allow him in our hands every once in a while because he's deceiving you. That's what it is. He wants you to believe that he's right and God's wrong. But my Bible says that God will never leave you nor forsake you. Somebody needs to know that, but the, uh, that God will never leave you nor forsake you. My Bible says that Christ is the advocate and he fights on our behalf. But the enemy wants you to believe that you're out here on your own. The enemy wants you to doubt God's love. The enemy wants you to feel like all hope is gone. The enemy wants you to think that it's over. The enemy wants you to throw in the towel. The enemy wants you to doubt God's forgiveness. All the while, God is trying to tell you every day that I do love you. God is trying to tell you that all hope is not gone. God is trying to tell you that it is not over. God is trying to tell you that you should not give up. God is trying to tell you that you don't need to doubt his power. Don't get confused. Don't be deceived. And don't let the enemy lie to you. Because God said, and this is what I love, I am who they said I am. <laughs> I am who they said I am. God said, I do love you. God said, I already forgave you. God said, I got big plans for you. God said, I got a future for you. God said, I am going to heal you. God said, I will deliver you. God said, you are a conqueror. God said, you are victorious. God said, I do have a future for you. Otherwise, you wouldn't be standing here today. How many you know that if it had not been for God blessing your life, if it had not been for God healing your life, you wouldn't be standing here today. He protected you. He looked out for you. He put his loving arms around you. And because of that, don't be deceived because you are fighting against a defeated foe. The enemy can't touch you because he's already been defeated. You can win the battle. So the enemy wants you to be discouraged. He wants you to be depressed. He wants you to be skeptic. He wants you to keep away from having faith. He wants you to be taken from under God's control. He wants you to live a life of disarray. But God says you are victorious. Get back to the text. Satan got kicked out of heaven and he's mad about it. Satan got defeated and he's mad about it. But he will not win when you stay close to Jesus. Nothing is going to be able to touch a follower of God. You may be set back, but you will not be cast down. You will get back up because we fall down, but God lifts us up when we follow his word. We fall down, but God lifts us up when we stay devoted to the Lord. All you got to do is send some praises up and the blessing, the blessing. Anybody need a blessing? The blessing is going to come down. Shower down. Somebody say, shower down. Shower down the blessing. Shower down the blessing. Shower down the healing. Shower down your grace and your mercy in this place because we are victorious. If you're victorious today, why don't you just praise God for about 10 seconds? If you're victorious today, why don't you shout unto God? If you're victorious today, why don't you tell him you love him? If you're victorious today, why don't you say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The battle, the war has already been won. Can we give him a praise today? The battle has already been won. So live your life like you got the victory. Live your life like you got the victory. Live your life for Jesus. Come on, give him some praise today. Let us all stand. Let us all stand. You are victorious. God said, I have big plans for you. Plans to make you prosper. I got big plans for you. Plans for better welfare. Plans for your daily needs. Plans to give you help. Plans for protection. Plans to give you joy. 
joy that the world didn't give to you and joy that the world can't take away what the enemy stole from you I want you to take it back what the enemy made you believe I want you to get it out your mind what this world makes you see I, I want you to look at things from a spiritual perspective I want you to look at things like God wants you to see them because if you do that you'll live a life of victory you'll be able to sing the song victory is mine victory today is mine grab your neighbor by the hand and let's just